Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Ranking Member. It's good to be here. Uh, and thank you all for appearing. I've sat where you sat. It's harder than it looks, so uh, I appreciate your being here. I want to ask a question about supervising big banks when they break the law, uh, including the mortgage foreclosures, but others as well. You know, we all understand why settlements are important, that trials are expensive and we can't dedicate huge resources to them. But we also understand that if a party is unwilling to go to trial, either because they're too timid or because they lack resources, that the consequence is they have a lot less leverage in all the settlements that occur. Now, I know there have been some landmark settlements, but we face some very special issues with big financial institutions. If they can break the law and drag in billions in profits, and then turn around and settle, paying out of those profits, they don't have much incentive to follow the law. It's also the case that every time there's a settlement and not a trial, it means that we didn't have those days and days and days of testimony about what those financial institutions had been up to. So the question I really want to ask is about how tough you are, about how much leverage you really have in these settlements. And what I'd like to know is tell me a little bit about the last few times you've taken the biggest financial institutions on Wall Street all the way to a trial. Anybody? Um, Chairman Curry? To uh, offer my, my perspective, sure. a, a bank supervisor. Um, uh, we primarily view the uh, the tools that we have as uh, mechanisms for uh, it correcting deficiencies. Uh, so in, uh, the primary motive for our enforcement actions is really to identify the problem and then demand uh, uh, a, a solution to it on an ongoing basis. That's right. And then you set a price for that. I'm sorry yeah. to interrupt, but I just want to move this along. That's effectively a settlement. And what I'm asking is, when did you last take, and I know you haven't been there forever, so I'm really asking about the OCC a large financial institution, we, a Wall Street bank, well, to trial. Uh, the institutions I supervise, national banks and federal thrifts, we've actually had a, a fairly a fair number of uh, consent orders. Uh, we do not no. have to bring uh, people to uh, in a, a, a trial or an Well, I appreciate that you say you don't have to bring them to trial. My question is, when did you bring them to trial? Uh, we have not had to do it as a practical matter to achieve our supervisory goals. Ms. Walter? Thank you, Senator. Um, um, as you know, among our remedies are penalties, but the penalties we can get are limited, and we actually have asked for additional authority, my predecessor did, uh, to raise penalties. What we, when we look at these issues, and uh, we truly believe that we have a very vigorous enforcement program, um, we look at the distinction between what we could get if we go to trial and what we could get if I, we don't. I appreciate that. That's, that's what everybody does. And so the question I'm really asking is, can you identify when you last took the Wall Street banks to trial? Um, I will have to get back to you with the specific information, but we do litigate, um, and we do have settlements that are, that are either rejected by the commission We're or not put forward for Okay, approval. we've got multiple people here. Anyone else want to tell me about the last time you took a Wall Street bank to trial? You know, I, I just want to note on this, there are district attorneys and U.S. attorneys who are out there every day squeezing ordinary citizens on sometimes very thin grounds and taking them to trial in order to make an example, as they put it. I'm really concerned that too big to fail has become too big for trial. That just seems wrong to me.